You are welcome to the Word and Prayer TV on this channel. We create Christian content that will help you in your spiritual growth, ranging from powerful Word of God, powerful prayer sessions, night vigils, and many more. I'm sure this message you're about to listen to will transform your life powerfully. So I encourage you to stay to the end of this message and I entreat you to subscribe, like, and share this message with others. So without wasting much of our time, let's get into the message of today. God bless you. Oh, my season has come. Oh, my help has come. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh. Shout it, say after me, Father, my eyes are on you. Listen, mean it from your heart. If it takes you closing your eyes to say that, by this is a deliverance service. Some of you is why everything God said from January till now has not happened. You can do anything because you want to receive help from men. It is amazing what believers do in the secret. And then they come to church and say, this is what God did. It's a lie. When God moves, it is clear that this one is God. Say it again. Say, Father, my eyes are on you. Shout it. Say, Father, my eyes are on you. Turn it into a prayer in one minute. My eyes are on you for my children. My eyes are on you for this ministry. I cannot rise by my strength. My eyes are on you for the next season. My eyes are on you for my finances. My eyes are on you for the performance of your word. You will use men, but may it never come from men. You will use men as vehicles, as channels, but never my source. Somebody pray. This is your miracle service already. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. Stop frustrating yourself looking unto men. God will use men. When he uses the men, acknowledge them and honor them. But let it be God leading the men to help you. Not you manipulating your way through the life and the spaces of men. That is idolatry. In Jesus' name we pray. This is a very powerful revelation. With all due respect, you are a man of God. Stop looking unto men. No. I'm looking unto this person, this person, help. No, no. They looked unto him. When you look unto Jesus, genuinely, it was God's servant that said, God told him, can you look up and look down at the same time? He said, every time you are looking unto men, never claim you are looking unto me. It is true. And it's a human thing to want to look unto men. Because why look up to God who looks far when there is a man who has it close to you? But as close as you are, look at me. Have you tried to send a text to someone who is close to you? And yet that text did not arrive early. The person is close to you. Your phones are even together. You press send and then it did not go early. And somebody from somewhere sent an email and it even arrived before your text. They call it network problem. Am I right on that? So just because someone is close to you does not guarantee that he will be God over your life and then you succeed. It is when God puts it in their heart, then proximity becomes valuable when God is in the equation. Please help those under the anointing. Proximity, listen carefully, becomes valuable when God is in the equation. If you tear a zinc and bring someone who is sick and Jesus is not there, there are many troubles you have caused. You will fix that zinc. You will suffer from many people and return back disappointed. Proximity is only valuable to men when the God of the Bible is there. But I tell you, for as many who will choose to look unto Jesus tonight, my God will surprise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
I have met extraordinary miracles and manifestations of God's grace and help in my life from unexpected sources. If I were given the liberty of designing the arrival of my blessings, I would fail woefully. Did you hear what I said? If I was given the liberty by God, that means if God said, my son, as as my love for you, choose how you want your blessings to come. I would have frustrated my own growth myself. Because it's when the blessings arrive, you will see the wisdom that brought them. That you never would have imagined how it would have come. They looked unto him. Is someone learning? Please sit down. This is how God delivers people in a miracle service. You hear this one word now, you can go back and return. For some of you, when you return home, you take some five minutes to repent. I have made you too small in my eyes, oh Lord, forgive me, and I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me, but now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong And in my heart and with my song Oh Lord, be magnified Oh Lord, be magnified That's your own miracle service Who told you God cannot give you a house? Who told you God cannot pay rent? You are calculating what is in your account. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Who told you God cannot give you visibility? Who told you God cannot sort the shame? You are owing. You are not the first to owe. You remain thinking like that. That debt would depress you. There are people who have owed to the billions of dollars God brought them out. Shake away that doubt and believe God tonight. Apostles, because you don't know my problem, let me tell you the truth. I submit to you not to insult your pain. But there is nothing happening to you that is happening for the first time. The Bible says the thing that is, is the thing that was, and is the thing that is to come. The things that are written aforetime, the pain that was written aforetime, the limitations, the defeats, the weakness, written aforetime, is for our learning. So that we, through patience and comfort of scripture, might find hope. Be magnified. Oh Lord, you are highly exalted and there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. God for you when he takes the stage and begins to lead you you will watch with wonder your own life then you will know that he's the one leading you and you will see the glory that comes out of such a life it becomes clear that this one bar is the hand of God I don't know why I'm staying here to press it this uh, this is what God wants to deliver someone from unbelief the truth is we don't trust God. We think we do. It's a lie. We trust rich people. Huh? We trust gatekeepers. And it will flow through them. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying the dynamics is always from God. If you miss that, you have turned into idolatry. Affect my life. Breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life. For someone you came to church tonight to repent from idolatry. You have pinned your uncle's picture everywhere in your house. Shouting day and night. This man will not sleep. You are joking. God is not that wicked. 
the man is praying over his own life give me sleep and you are in your room praying and say he should not sleep if you were God which one will you answer the man is asking God you are my lifter give me sleep and someone else who should be looking on to Jesus you are looking on to the man and say God wake that man he will not sleep Abba look on to Jesus I'm telling you God is speaking to someone here Apostle, there's this contract. So there's this senator. His things are already working. Let me advise you, my dear businessman. I don't mean to insult your experience. Drop that phone contact. Drop your contract on the ground. And say, Lord, if you do not help me, help cannot come from anywhere. And watch the God of heaven. You see, this is what makes men. Is what leads to human worship. Because when you show men, if you don't help me, I'm dead. It's a lie. It's an insult on the power of God. It's the reason why when the miracles happen tomorrow, they look at you, they say, I made you who you are. And if you don't bow to me this way, I will punish you. But not God. When God lifts you, you have peace. You owe every man thanks, not worship. When God lifts you, you owe the men he used thanks. And then you owe the God who used them worship. But when men become both your source and the vehicle, they don't want thanksgiving alone. They want worship. Are you getting how it works now? When God becomes your source, then the only thing you owe men is deep honor and gratitude and never fail to do that. But when men become your source and the only thing you come and tell them is thank you, they say you are joking. Thank you for what? For being God? No, you don't thank God alone. You worship God. And if a man becomes your God, then you are forced to both thank and worship him. May I never worship any man. Yeah. The three Hebrew boys told Nebuchadnezzar, he said, oh king, matter of honor, we will give you honor. Matter of gratitude, gratitude. But when you come to the realm of worship, you have touched an area that is beyond your jurisdiction. Our God can deliver us. Is someone learning? Number two, let's hurry up. Do you know this already is someone's, is someone's miracle? This is what you came to church to learn. Let God choose the men that help you. You can honestly talk to him. Lord, I know you can use this man. However, let your will be done. And God will say, because you trust me enough to use both the men you know and the ones who do not, you do not know. If Abraham were to choose the person who will prosper him, he would not choose Abimelech. But it was Abimelech God used to give him great gifts. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. I hope you have been blessed powerfully by the message. If you have been blessed, I entreat you to share this message with others. Subscribe, like, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell when you subscribe. God bless you. See you in our next video.